Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for who you are. We bless you because you are the living God, you are the mighty God, you are the glorious God, you are the eternal God. You are the one who planned for us before we were created, before we were made. You are the one who made provision for our redemption, even while we are not here on earth. And we thank you because of the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary. We thank you for the sufficiency of grace to live in righteousness and holiness of life all the rest of our days. Lord, we are leaning on you. We are counting on you. That you who by the power of the blood of your son that was shed on Calvary change our status. Change our name. Change our condition. You will by the same power keep us to the end in Jesus' name. Speak to us now. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are looking into the word of God that is going to benefit us immensely, turn us around and make us a blessing to our generation. The members of the choir, they sang to us about the fact that we are redeemed. And as a redeemed person, we became children of God. They said, I've been saved by grace, a member of God's family. Redeemed child of God, now I reign in life. You will reign in life. You will reign over self, over sickness, over Satan, over infirmity in the name of Jesus. And now as a king ruling and reigning, you have one duty, one responsibility. And what is that? To please the Lord all the days of your life. And the children choir, or the youth rather, they told us also that being brought out of sin, being saved from sin, being delivered from the power of darkness, I am not going back. You will not go back. I say you will not go back. You will hold on firm to the very end in Jesus' name. Today I'm talking about self-identity. Self-identity. Why are we to talk about self-identity? We need to talk about it because some people do not understand the essence of identity, the purpose of identity, the power of identity. Because there could be mistaken identity. And there are some people, because they do not know who they are, they're trying to be like A, B, C, or D. They're not living the life that God has given them to live. Because they don't know themselves. They don't know the deposits of God in their lives. They don't know the grace of God in their life. They don't know of the will of God for their life. They don't know of the expectation of God for their life. They don't know who they are. They just don't know themselves. And if you don't know who you are, you will never know what you have. And if you don't know what you have, you will never be able to know what you can do in life. In any way or form, you all have what you call ID card. With your ID card, it has some informations that are peculiar to you. Somebody may bear the same name with you, but not the same birthday. Maybe they bear the same birthday, but you don't live in the same place. Maybe you live in the same place, but not the same height that you have. Maybe the same height, not the same column. Definitely, there is something unique about you that differentiates you from any and every other person. And that is the reason why, as a believer, you need to understand the need for you to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Self-identity can be viewed as the discovery of a person's true state from, go from God's standpoint. It is about you knowing your individuality. It's about you knowing your uniqueness. You are unique in your own way. You are unique for God's glory. It is for you to know your distinctiveness and the difference between you and the rest of the world. It is for you to know that being born again, you are like an eagle. And as an eagle, you can now be going on the ground with chicken. You are a child of God. 
And being born again, you have been lifted up high in the heavenly places together with Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, far, someone say far. I say someone say far, far above principalities and power. Pay attention here. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you are no more subject to the force and the powers of darkness of this age. Because you are far than them, you are higher than them, you are mightier than them, you are stronger than them. When you know your identity, someone say identity. I know my identity in Christ. When you don't know your identity in Christ, then you still want to be living the same way you were living before you came to Christ. You still want to be talking the same way you were talking before you came to Christ. You still want to be dressing the, way, the same way you dressed before you came to Christ. You know, a lot of people, why is it that the young people of our time, they are confused. Some of them genuinely gave their life to Christ, but once they go back to school, they don't understand that they are now different from who they used to be. Now they see other young boys in school. They still want to imitate them. They still want to copy them. They still want to act like them. They still want to walk like them. They still want to mingle like them. No, you used to be there. You are no more there. I say you are no more there. School boy, school girl, you are no more there. You know, some of them, they go through the elementary, the uh, middle and the high school, and then they get to college. And then it's like their eyes open, like the eyes of Adam and Eve got opened in the, in, in, in the garden. And then they went right away doing the wrong thing. Eating the forbidden fruit. And you get into college and you see the promiscuity of this life. The worldliness of this life. The ungodliness of this life. The atheism of this life. Everything is loaded there in the campuses. And then, because you don't know who you are, that wherever you are, you are a light that shines in the darkness. I say you are a light that shines in the darkness. And I declare today, no matter where you go, the light in you will shine. Ah, uh, ah, uh, in the name of the Lord, uh, the light in you will shine. And as a father, as a mother, as a man, as a woman, you get your place of work. You see people don't think such a way. You don't understand that you are different from them. And the only thing that will make the difference in you is when you act different, uh, your light will shine. You will stand your ground. I say you will stand your ground. And the Lord will keep you to the very end in Jesus' name. It's one thing for people to say something about you. It's another thing for you to know who you are yourself. That's why I'm talking about self. I know who you are. Until you know who you are, people can condemn you. People can criticize you. People can call you names. But you know who you are. It's sometimes I say, I am who God says I am. I don't know who you think you are. But when you know who you are, and then Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He came from the from, from heaven. He knew his status, he knew his condition, but then he overheard. Somebody say overheard. I don't care what you are hearing. What God says about you is what, is what matters the most. And people were saying all kinds of things. And then he got to a place that is called the coast of the Caesarea Philippi. And those, and that place is a place that certain gods uh, have been named in the time past. Certain deity. And then Jesus got there. And then he called the disciples and he said, you're calm. The twelve of you calm. Calm. Who do Men, open your Bible there. The book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. It says, who do men say that I, somebody say I, the son of man, am. Pay attention here. If you don't read carefully, you're going to miss something from that verse of the scripture. Jesus didn't just say, who do men say that I am? What did he say? Jesus is saying, I know my identity. I know that I'm a son of God. 
I know I'm a child of God. And now I'm saying, who do men say that I, the son of God, am? Before yourself get confused. Before you get carried away. I'm telling you, I'm a child of God. Amen? And then the answer began to come. Some say you are this, some say you are that, some say you are that, and Jesus looked and said, but you yourself, who do you say that I am? And the Holy Ghost showed up. I pray God will reveal you to people. God will take away the confusion about you from people in Jesus' name. Some don't understand that when you come to church as a visitor, you have an identity. Your identity is the identity of a visitor. And we don't expect from you what we expect from the members of the church. And when you say, I'm not just going to remain a visitor because you may have come once or twice or three times, you are still a visitor. You are not a bona fide member of the church yet. You are still an alien. Pay attention here. But then you say, I want to be a member of the church. At that point in time, there is another level of requirement from you. Somebody say amen. amen. And you get to a point in your life. And you say, I want to become a worker in the church. You know, some years ago, somebody came to me. Nice sister, lovely sister. She's still in the church and hearing me as I speak. I saw the way she came. She came the way she was. And praise God. She wasn't faking it or making it up. She came the way she was. She was coming from the world and she came with the world. And we received her the way she came. Hello, somebody. And eventually she wanted to be a member of the church. Okay, be a member of the church. And we still did not say change this or change that. We don't force anybody. Nobody can change anybody but God. I said only God can change anybody. Eventually she got born again. I said she got born again. Saved by grace. But then being born again she still needed the sincere milk of the world to grow. And so she was growing. And so she was growing. And one day came, she walked to my office and said, Pastor, I've been around here for some years. Now I'd like to be a, a, a worker in the church. And then I looked at her and I laughed. I said, that is interesting. That is lovely. I'll be glad to have you as one of my workers. I said, but... Somebody say but. I said but there is a higher level of requirement for you to be a worker than just an ordinary member. To cut a long story short, she said, Pastor, I am ready. My life will be for God. And then we laid it out and she was ready to go. You know, look it. at this country, the nation of America, you come in as a visitor. You have your status. You have your status. And then maybe they now, they now upgrade you, they elevate you, and then they say you are a resident alien. <coughs> resident what? Who are you? I said, who are you? You are still an alien. You mess up a little bit, what would they do? They will yank you out. You, and you are happy, you know, I heard of some people over there in a Houston, Texas, uh, two, two, uh, two people, I won't tell you their country now. And one of them was saying that uh, if you mess up with me, I'm going to beat you, I will kill you. The worst they can do is to return me back to my country. And the other one said, you know what, I will kill you, I'm a citizen. You are a resident alien. I'm a citizen, I will kill you, the worst they can do is to jail me. They will not send me back. 
even in their foolishness, they know the difference between a resident alien with a green card and somebody who is a citizen. Listen to this. Listen to this. If you are born again, you are a citizen of heaven. Therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all the things are passed away. The Bible says, behold, can you say that again? All things are become new. So, if you're having an issue with identity, maybe you're not born again yet. You ask somebody, are you born again? Say, I think so. Why are you thinking so? It's because you're not sure. Are you born again? I'm still working on it. And then I remember one of the things I studied in accounting those days, there's something they call work in progress. And then there's another that is called finished products. God will make you a finished product. I said God will make you a finished product. So that your salvation is not going to be gradual. You get it once and you get it for life. You know some of some people, their sanctification is gradual. It's gradual. But you are sanctified, you are sanctified. Can you imagine somebody say, are you giving birth to a baby? Yes, I'm giving birth. Last week, the person was giving birth. It's only the head of the baby that came out. This week, it's only one hand that came out. Another week, another hand. Is that the way we deliver babies? How long does it take? How many times does it, does it take for the baby to come out? One time. If the baby stops halfway, there is trouble. There is trouble. And so, it's either you are born again or you are not born again. Self-identity. If you are really saved, then the words of God, the word of God will be there to guide you, to instruct you, and to direct you in Jesus' name. And so, the question of identity is what many people are dealing with. And that's why we need to really know ourselves who we are in Christ Jesus. I'm going to look at three points. Number one, the identity of the certified converted sinner certified converted sinner you know the bible tells us in romans chapter 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god you are a certified sinner heaven calls you a sinner the devil calls you a sinner the world calls you a sinner that is who you are there is nothing to doubt about that the wicked are strained from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. You see a little child. The child did something wrong. You said, who did it? What did they say? I don't know. I don't know. Who told the child to tell a lie? Because it is in the nature of man to sin. It's the nature of sin. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. If you are still telling lies, lie not against the Holy Ghost that you are born again. You are still a sinner. First John chapter 3. And I really will appreciate if you can open your Bible there. So that we can look at it together. First John chapter 3, I'm looking at the 8th verse there. He that committed sin is of the devil. You still lie? You still steal? You are still immoral? All the evil you are, you are still rebellious and disobedient, self-will and stubborn. It doesn't matter whether you are young or you are old. It doesn't matter for how long you have been in the church. The Bible says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil in your life. If those things are not there undestroyed, that work is not yet manifested. Verse 9 says, whosoever, man, woman, old, young, Father, mother, pastor, or pew member, leader, or you have been led, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. 
For his seed. For his seed. For his seed. Remaineth in him. And he cannot sin. You've gotten a new nature. A new power. A new grace. He cannot sin. Because he is born of God. Like father, like son. Like father, like son. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is what? Is dead. But the gift of God, I can't hear somebody here, is eternal life, is life that is eternal, life that is continuous, life that is progressive, life that is long, eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. So understand that if you are going to really be called a real child of God, then this identity of yours must be clear to the whole world. The world must, be, must see. Your colleagues must know about it. Your superiors must testify to it. Other students like you must know the difference between you and them. Pay attention here. Other religious people must be able to say, this one is different. The Lord will see the difference in you. I said the Lord will do the, the, the difference in you in Jesus' name. The Bible says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If you are the redeemed of the Lord, you are converted by God, you love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Pay attention. You don't love the music of the world. You are born again. You don't love the styles of the world in your dressing. And the things you do. No. Because you are a child of God. You don't embrace the cultures of the world. The cultures of the world. You don't embrace the ceremonies of the world. I see those ceremonies coming in. Coming in. Coming in. Coming in. And you try to check it, you get in trouble. You get in trouble. You know, somebody, and I'm not afraid of saying this, somebody told me that some people in the church are not happy with me because I'm preaching against worldliness in the church. And I said, is that right? I'm sorry for letting me to know. And for your information, I'm going to preach against worldliness again. Yeah. I said, I'm going to preach against it again. Yeah. If you are tired of me, you want the world, you go to the world. Am I telling you? But if you came to the church for the world, if you came to, be, to the church to be changed, to be transformed, if you came to the church to be translated by the power of the Lord, then this is the place for you. But if you came to church, no matter how long you have been here, and you expect that we will diminish, lower the standard of the word of God, so that you can live your life, you are in the wrong place. I said, ah, I thought people would say amen to that. Maybe you are one of those that are complaining about talking, preaching against worldliness. Amen? And then, and then I, I looked into other people that fears the Lord. Believes the Lord. I'm going to show you a video in a second. And this is not deeper lie. Two of them actually. Two of them. Maybe some of you have seen them. But they don't matter to you. And then, you knew deeper life is a holiness preaching church. And we say, you cannot come to church or go anywhere as a child of God with your body naked. All that need to be covered up are opened up. And you make yourself an agent of darkness. And all the dressing of the world, the cultures of the world, the traditions of the world, the styles of the world, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are bringing them in. And you want to shut us all. No, we will shut you out. I said we will shut you out. If it is only five people we have in this church, I know we want people in the church. 
if it's only five people or 50 people that will really embrace the Lord, we will work with those people. If 500 will embrace the Lord, we will work with those people. Uh -uh, don't you understand? Jesus preached to thousands of people. Thousands of people. And then eventually, he preached the hard sermon and they all left him. Remaining 12. You know what Jesus did? He turned to the 12. And what did he say? Will you also go away? If they want to go, let them go. Will you also go away? Jesus never lamented because of those that left. The Bible says, if they had been part of us, they would have stayed with us. They would have stayed with us. If they loved the truth, they would have stayed with us. If they loved the Lord, they would have stayed with us. Uh, we're going to take a break. I know I never preached like this before. But we're going to take a break. Somebody say, take a break. Uh, the media department, please give me something. Let them see. This is not deeper life now. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and we're at verse 9. Listen. In like manner also. Bible talking. In like manner also. That women. That who? Women. That women. Adorn themselves. Adorn themselves. In modest apparel. In modest apparel. With shame faces. Shame faces. And sobriety. What, what, what else? Not with broided listen, hair. Listen, listen, good. Not, Not with, with broided hair. Broided hair, hair decoration. Or, or gold. Gold. Or pearls. Or pearls. Or costly array. Now, many of you have wrote me and said, makeup is not in the Bible. This is what you church folk look like. One of your brothers get that side for me, will you please? Quickly, please. Come on, brother. Set that over there. Set that over there. Two of you brothers uncover this one. Two of you brothers uncover this one, please. Take your time. Uh -uh. Take your time. Take your time. I don't want you. Take your time. Pick that up down there. That's why you didn't take your time. You took the Christian wig off. Put it on. Now, you Christians, you have so-called Christian celebrities that look like this. You have some first lady in churches, pastor wives, you look like this. You let your children look like this. You let many of the mothers in the church look like this. You go to so-called Christian concerts and the women look like this the bible says in like manner also in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel what is so modest about this what is so modest about this there were some women wrote me when they heard me preach against it and said, my pastor don't say nothing. I most certainly know he don't. Your pastor wants to see this. Yeah. Your pastor wants to see this. Yeah. Because your pastor wants to go here. Yeah. Am I right like that? Talk to me. Give me Jeremiah. Yes. Chapter, chapter four. Now for you that says makeup is not in the Bible. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter four. The fourth chapter. And at verse 30. Follow me in the Bible and verse 30. Oh, this is good. Come on. Jeremiah chapter four and verse 30. Yes. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? You see. When you spoiled in these churches, you can look like this. Because the preacher preach against no sin. T.D. Jakes ain't gonna say nothing about this. Creflo Dollar ain't gonna say nothing about this. 
Joel Austin ain't gonna say nothing about this. Your bishop, he ain't gonna say nothing about this. When you up on the choir like this, your bishop looking at you. Am I right, I said? Amen. Listen. And when thou art spoiled. When you are spoiled. What wilt thou do? What will you do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson. The Bible said you close yourself with crimson. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. What else? Though thou rinnest thy face with painting. Your face have what on it? Thou rinnest thy face with painting. You see it? The Bible says. Though thou rinnest thy face with painting. How do God feel about the way this look? In vain. In what? In vain. What do they do in vain? Thou shalt make thyself fair. You think you look beautiful, but in God's eyes, your fair look is vanity. Vanity. This is what church has become to. You look on BET, the choirs look like this. Baptist folk. Like this. Non-denominational. Like this. Right. So-called apostolic. Like this. Catholics. Like this. Give me Leviticus 10.10. 10. In Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Listen now what the Bible says. That thou shalt put a difference. What did it say? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Turn Williams up. Make him louder. Yeah. Leviticus. What is it? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Leviticus 10, 10. I want all my viewers to get this, get this, get this. Call the ones that hate it and say, look at what that crazy Pastor Jennings got on television now. That's right. You know why some of you upset? Because this look like your mama. This look like your daughter. This look like your wife. This look like your second wife. This look like the pastor wife. And that's why you upset with me. Because we call a spade a spade. This is not the look of a Christian woman. No. Talk to me. Somebody posted a video of the excerpt of the clip of me preaching next to some gospel singer. She was dressed like this. Singing about Jesus. Talking about let's sing praises. A gospel singer dressed like this. And yet you men want to fight me. Women. You know why men cuss me out? Because I'm encouraging you to be modest. Because they want to keep playing with you like the slave master. They want you to look like this. So they can keep driving and bumping their horn. They want your daughters to look like this. So that old hypocrite can take advantage of your daughter. They want your wife to look like this. So they can take advantage of your wife. Call me what you want. But we're going to put clothes on our women. The Bible said that the women adorn themselves how? In modest apparel. Come here, Sister Bailey. Modest. Come here, Sister Bailey. She's the church photographer. Stand right here. Stand right here. This is modest. Come here, Sister Jennings. Come here quickly, please. This is modest. Modest of power. Now, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with it? 
How in the world you expect for a man to come at church and think about Jesus and you looking like a stripper? Talk to me. Bible says, let the women that women adorn themselves how? in modest apparel. Modest. Modest. Respectable. Presentable. You may be seated. Even some jobs got a dress code. Am I right, I said? So you on the hip hop network, y'all heard y'all making fun of me and said, oh man, uh, he must really got a whole man for him to lash out. <laughs> All that weak talk. You see, your mothers, your daughters, your niece and aunts, they're like this. You women, you send your daughters out with something tight like this. And these old men looking at your 15, 17 year old daughter. How in the world can you criticize what I'm telling you? Listen, even if I'm not in church, this is morally wrong. Morally, it's wrong. You know, when I was watching the British royal wedding, I saw all of those stars who used to go naked, well covered. I thought that they are of those that want to go naked every time. I believe that prior to their invitation, they were told, this is how to come and this is how to dress up. You see how a government structure, well-cultured system imposed discipline on the so-called stars. But the church is so ashamed. Today we have naked people sing on the pulpit. Today we have almost half naked present on the pulpit, seducing the members of church, casting out the spirit of lust on the congregation. But the royalty, the British royalty insisted and watched all of them. They were completely well covered. That's what kingdom is all about. That's what kingdom is all about. It's the culture, it's the system that has to be imposed. Whether you like it or not. I believe that some of these stars didn't show up because of the way they were told to dress. Who cares if they showed up or not? They are one breath away to their graves. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? They are one breath away to their graves. Let nobody fool you. Money will not save you. Same, same will not save you. Whether you are a Hollywood star or wherever you are, nothing can save you except Jesus Christ. Young people sit up. Don't let them control you. Don't let the movie stars control you. Stand out for Christ. Be happy to be peculiar. We are not here to fit in. We are not here to be accepted. We are here to establish the kingdom of God on earth. And you, had he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead in trespasses and sins. We are in, in time past. Somebody say in time past. Ye 
walked according to the course of this world, according to the pattern of this world, according to the dictates of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Pay attention here. All those you see out there are being controlled by the spirit of the devil. The Bible says, the spirit that now walketh, tell me what follow. Can you say it loud and clear? In the children of disobedience, you will not be disobedient child in Jesus name. It says, among whom also we all had in the past our conversation in time past in the loss of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and where by nature the children of wrath you will not be a child of wrath I say you will not be a child of wrath but God verse 4 who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Even had raised us up and made us to sit together. Where? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men. Before men. And that is why if you say you are a child of God, a Christian worker, a Christian minister, and your children are not living right, we tell you what to do. We show you what to do. Because as God's children, we must be examples to the world in Jesus' name. And those of you that were here last Sunday, I told you, if your children are adults, you are no longer responsible for them. But as long as they are under your leadership, as long as they are under age, you will be held responsible by God and by man. But the Lord will help us, help all of us together in Jesus' name. And when you are living and walking in the light of the gospel, the work of God, the word of God, the Bible says in that same Ephesians where we read the, the 19 verse now, it says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto an holy temple of the Lord. There are some keywords there. Verse 22 says, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through faith. So then, the identity... Of the certified converted sinner is that that sinner now converted is now a citizen of God's kingdom. You find that in verse nineteen, uh, in verse nineteen a. Number two, that individual or those people are now members of God's family, and finally they become stones. In the temple of the Lord. You'll find that in verses 20 to 22. I get to the second point. The identity of a consecrated, crucified saint. Consecrated, crucified saints. The book of Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5 says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath a clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Do you see there, if you really want to make it to heaven, 
There are conditions. And you don't want to come to church without expecting to meet with some conditions. Some will say, well, they prefer it in that church. Good for you. They prefer it in that church. You know, there are some that says, we are preachers of fire and brimstone. Where do we get fire and brimstone from? I said, where do we get it from? Oh, now you are afraid of talking. You don't want to offend them. Where do we get it from? From the Bible. Should we preach the Bible? I said, should we preach the Bible? Listen to this. When you look at all the preachings of Jesus, from beginning to the end, Jesus talked about hell more than any other thing. More than any other thing. So, if they don't want to hear about this because they are afraid of hell. And yet, they will not give up things that will get them to hell. But the Bible says, if you want to attend to the heal of the Lord, you must have a clean hand, a pure heart. And you must be truthful and honest and sincere in your life. Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That means it's possible you come to church and you don't see the Lord. It's possible you give your money to the church and you don't see the Lord. It is possible you serve sacrificially and you don't see the Lord. It is possible you are a preacher and you don't see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness. And that the Bible is saying the peace you follow with man should be on the basis of holiness. Not on the basis of compromise. Because you don't want trouble, you want peace, so you must compromise. That's not what the word of God is talking about. Come back to Ephesians chapter 2, sorry, chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 27. If you are a consecrated, crucified saint, because once you are born again, you become a saint. You consecrate yourself. You dedicate yourself to the Lord. You will begin to live a crucified life. Not the same way you used to live before. Chapter 5, verse 22. Wise, submit yourselves unto your own husband. That is the identity of a crucified saint. As unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. So let the wives be to their own husband. What follow? I can hear you. Let the women say it loud and clear. In everything. Verse 25. Husbands. Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, which shall be presentable. I said, which shall be presentable, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without, without blemish. Without blemish. Without blemish. And the Lord will help us in Jesus name. Revelation chapter 21 verse 27. Revelation 21 27. And there shall be no wise. Enter into it. Anything that defile it. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. Or make it a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. You will make it there. I said you will make it there. In the name of Jesus. So, if you are going to have this identity of a consecrated, crucified saint, then you must live a God-honoring life. God honor Your life on daily basis must honor the Lord. Must honor the Lord. If you are there and what you do, where you go, what you wear, the work you do is not honoring God. There is need for repentance today. God has brought you here for a purpose. That you might be better prepared for heaven. And you will not miss heaven in Jesus name. John chapter 1 verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Your life must be a light that shines in the midst of the darkness of the world. That makes a difference anywhere and everywhere you go. 
your conduct, your character, your behavior, your attitude, if you are going to be this consecrated, crucified same, then you will daily live an overcoming life. One, you live a God honoring life. Number two, you live an overcoming life on a daily basis. First John chapter 5, verse 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. You be a man of faith. You walk in faith. You talk by faith. You live by faith. And the Lord will keep you to the end in the name of Jesus. Psalm 55, verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy bodies upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Somebody say amen to that. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. You will be established by the grace of God. I say you'll be established by the power of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. If you are going to be this individual we are talking about. Crucified saint. Then restitution will not be a problem to you. We are at such a time. Right now. That churches are telling us. Your salvation, your life is not between you and God alone. It's not between you and God alone. How about the man you have robbed? How about the things you have stolen? How about the people you have deprived of their rights and what belongs unto them? How about the things you have stolen that needed to be returned back to the owner? How about somebody's certificate or, or, or you are using or somebody's uh, social security that you are using and you are lying to the people? How about the marriage you did? The arranged marriage that you did? You lied to the government to get your green card. You lie to the government to become a citizen. And you think heaven will turn the other eye on that? No, sir. No, ma'am. There is need for restitution. Need for restitution. And anything you know you have done wrong in life, if you want to be that consecrated, crucified saint, restitution will not be a problem for you. James chapter 5 verse 14. You know, these days, it is difficult for some people to, to, to apologize for their wrong. And when you correct them, they get offended. They get offended. James 5.16, confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another. Please pay attention here. Pay attention here. This passage of the scripture is saying, as a saint, as a child of God, you are not committing sin anymore. I told you in 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. He that is born of God does not commit what? Sin. Does not commit sin. So we're not talking about sin, but a mistake. You stepped on your brother's toe. You mistakenly did something wrong. It's still an offense. It's still, it's, it's, it's still a fall. You are supposed to do something because of carelessness. It's not done the way it's supposed to be done. It's still a fault if you not go ahead to lie that you did it right when you didn't do it. Then sin has come on top of the mistake you made. So the Bible is saying, even for faults, the mistakes we made, restitution is still required. Look at it again. Are you there? Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent, Prayer of the righteous availeth more. If you are crucified, you know the way the apostle Paul put it in the book of Galatians, chapter 2. Open your Bible there. Galatians chapter 2, looking at the 20th verse there, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, you will live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Everybody read verse 2 and let's go together. One, two, go. I 
And be not conformed to this world. That is the scripture. And that is what we must preach. And that is the life we must live. It's not convenient for the body. But that is the way it is. The Lord will help us in Jesus name. Be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, when you have this crucified life that we're talking about, you'll be living a life of humility. Humility. A lot of people are proud now. A lot of church workers are proud. Church ministers are proud. Church leaders are proud. The pride of whatsoever it is. But then the Bible says that pride cometh before destruction. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 12, verse 2. Proverbs 11 verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. With the lowly is wisdom. And chapter 18 verse 12 tells us, before destruction, the heart, uh, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. And before honor is humility. It's humility. I know there are people in the church now, anything they want to do, to get the praise of men, to look big before people, they want to do it. The Bible tells us, in Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, let nothing be done through strife of vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each other, let each esteem other better than himself. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When you live this life, there will be eternal delight for you. When you live this life, there will be earthly delight for you. This is what I'm talking about. When you live a sacrificial life, a sanctified life, a separated life, a devoted life for the Lord, a life that distinctively distinguishes you from the rest of the world, that identifies you as a true child of God, the Bible says you will shine as light in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This earthly delight that you will get will include you shining as the light of glory, you living victorious over all the first and powers of darkness, you living in honor and dignity. You living in purity of heart and of life. And miraculous answer to your prayers will come your way in Jesus' name. When you live this life we are talking about, the peace of God, the presence of God, the power of God will be upon you in Jesus' name. And not that alone, all those are here on earth, then in eternity. In eternity, you will inherit heaven. You will live for God forever and ever. You will live in rest and in peace. You will live the rest of your life in joy. You will be in fellowship with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All that you have been laboring for in your life, inheriting heaven, will be your portion in Jesus' name. And then you serve the Lord heartily, the crown of glory. The crown of righteousness, the crown of peace will be yours. We start upon them with your mansions bigger and bigger and bigger than your imaginations in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The Lord will keep you, the Lord will guide you. The Lord will preserve you. I get to the final point. The identity of a commissioned conquering saint. Understand. When you are consecrated and crucified as a saint, then the Lord will look at you as a vessel unto honor. The Lord will commission you because you are living a daily life of a conqueror. And you will live conquerors Every day in Jesus' name. What is a commission? You become a tool in the hand of the Lord. Matthew 28. Looking at it from verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. You have learned of the Lord. You are a child of God. 
you are walking the Lord. You have the light of God in you. Then you go and shine to your world. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the church said, Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, all the world, all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Look at this. Look at it. The identity of concourse. Commissioned conquerors. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And in the name of They shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I said they shall recover. That is the identity of a commissioned conquering saint. You live a conquering life over self. You conquer yourself first. Before you want to talk of a conquering the devil. You conquer your, 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 your appetite for sin. Your appetite for worldliness. Your appetite for the things of this life, you conquer that force. You conquer the society that influences you because environment affects people. You know what I discovered? The lady that just got married that we watch about just now, I forgot the name now. Megan, she used to be celebrity, am I right? But we discovered since she got married now, her dressing has changed. We don't know about tomorrow, but right now, it's like you are here, you are not there. When you were there, that was your life. Now that you are here, things must be, must be different. In your life, things will be different. I said things will be different. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that when you are a rich child of God, the power of God is coming upon you. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. So then, as a commissioned conquering saint, you are equipped with honor and with dignity. You are equipped with with glory and with grace. You have the promises of God for you. You have the power of God for your life. You have the protection of God for your life. You have the presence of God. You have the partnership of God. And not just that, you have power over spiritual warfare. How many of you know that every human being is fighting a warfare? Whether you're a believer or not. But when you become a believer, it is intensified. It is small. And the more the battle, the more the power. The more the battle, the more the grace. The more the battle, the more the victory in Jesus' name. That's why we are told in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Open your Bible there. Looking at it from the 10th verse. The Bible tells us. Ephesians chapter 6 it says we wrestle not we wrestle not so unfortunately some believers did not know that they are on the battlefield it says we uh where is it now verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his mind Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the enemy. Verse 12. What's the statement? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. That is why some people don't understand why it is difficult for them to obey simple word of God. Why they think if they are doing it like that over there, like that over there, they don't understand that the spirit of the air is controlling them. I want to imitate them. Come back to the word of God and the word of God will profit you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. When you are a commissioned saint of the Lord, then God engages you in the work of the ministry. Uh, you shall receive power. Yeah, the power is released, but it's not for everybody. It is only for faithful servants of the Lord and the power is coming your way. The power for salvation is coming your way. The power for deliverance is coming your way. The power for progress is coming your way. The power to succeed and to excel in life is coming your way in Jesus' name. You need to know who you are. Self-identity. Self-identity. You are a man of authority. I say you are a man of authority. And you are a woman of power. You are a child of God. And God will walk in you. God will walk through you. In the name of Jesus. Let's rest upon our feet as we go before the Lord in prayer. Self-identity. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? They saw, they, 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 quite, they told us, my identity in Christ was bought by grace. I was sought and found. Redeemed by Christ at Calvary. All the burdens and the cause of sin now pass. I am living in the glory of his grace. I am living in the glory of his grace. I am living in the glory of his grace. I am redeemed child of God. I've been saved by grace. A member of God's family. I'm redeemed child of God. Now I reign in life. And live to please my Lord. You are not living to please yourself. You are not living to please the world. Students. You are not living or to, 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 to conform to the school environment. The worldliness there. The bad language is there. The bad conduct and character there. If you are coming to church and you are not born again, you must be born again. Jesus died for you. And if you are a preacher, a pastor, don't be afraid of your faces. That is what God told Jeremiah. Don't be afraid of their threat. That is what God told, told Jeremiah. They may threaten you. They may give you names. You know your soul. You know your calling. You know why you're in the ministry. You know that you are heading to heaven. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Can I have an organist on the keyboard please? This is your time. I've been talking to you. It's your time. It's your turn to turn to God. It's your turn to turn to, to talk to God. If you have been angry with the man of God because he's preaching the truth, it's your turn to repent of your life. If you have been compromised, mindset out there because you want to conform, because you want to be acceptable to the people, the people may accept you, the world may accept you, but the Lord will reject you except you repent.
be a consecrated saint. Be a converted soul. Lead a sacrificial, crucified life. Be a vessel of honor in the hand of the master. Make a difference in your generation. Make a difference in your life. You say you are a worker, but you still tell lies. You say, accommodate and tolerate and condone sin and iniquity and transgression. You are still sold out of the worldliness out there and the worldly ceremony and the worldly music and the worldly dressing and the worldly language and the worldly friends if you say you are a student and you are born again let your light so shine let your light so shine let your light so shine before men and if you have been, been born again you will not go back You will not go back to sin. You will not go back to the world. You will not go back to your old vomit. Pray for the grace. The grace to stand. The grace to serve the Lord. The grace to please the Lord. If out of fear, you have been living a double life, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Tell yourself, I won't, I won't go the way I came. Don't be fooled by position. Don't be fooled by title. I won't go the same way I came. Something must change before I leave. Something must change before I leave here today. 